Today we're doing a firearm simulation, uh, which is a mobile device that we use to train quarterly on our proficiency with our weapons that were issued through the department. Uh, we'll be going through a variety of scenarios based in the community, uh, anywhere from an offender attacking us when we're at a home visit to uh, us assisting law enforcement when they're under fire. Um, it's important that we continue to train with our firearms and our, and our situational awareness. Um, this allows us to be on our feet and on our toes and know how we will react in situations that are life-threatening to us or that may cause us physical harm. Uh, the Glock Model 19, nine millimeter version of the weapon that you guys carry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all that should be good. Every, this is a working function, functioning weapon. It just will never ever fire a bullet, mm -hmm. okay? Everything functions, infrared laser for the barrel, electronics and sensors built into the weapon here. Everything functions, just like the real thing. Only difference, magazines, they're full of compressed air. We're gonna start off with some target shooting. Five rounds is all we're gonna take our time with. After that, we'll, we'll move into the uh, scenarios. You guys ever worked together before out in the field? No, never right. know. You had the exact same training, correct? Yes. You guys should be able to work together as a team, right? Yes, sir. That's what we, we will expect from you in here. This will be lane one, this will be lane two. When the scenarios start, you will be a team. You have to communicate with each other, interact with the people on the screen. Communication is key. Let's just say you guys went out, they'd been out in the field doing some work, and you come back in and you encounter a situation and the secretary comes to you, okay? And uh, basically, there's a situation going on in the main office here in Knoxville. And you guys just, you guys come back from the field and she catches you at the door. I got lead on this one. You're the lead. Okay. You are responding to a call at a local business where an employee has taken a supervisor hostage. The suspect is reportedly armed. This is the Knoxville office. You just come back from doing home business. Oh, my gosh, here. There's a guy in there. He's an employee. All right. Step back okay, okay ma'am, ma'am, come with us. Ma'am, come with us. Call 911 and evacuate the building. Come back this way. Call 911. Ma'am, evacuate the building and call 911. Sir, I'm Sir, on the left. Leave. Sir, in the blue shirt, please come with us. Drop the line. Drop the, Drop the weapon. Drop the gun. Gun, gun, gun. I wish the public knew just what we did on it, more so what we did in training and how we incorporate that into our daily job duties. Um, a lot of people don't know what type of training we go to, what certifications we receive after obtaining our completion of and graduation of basic probation pro officer training. And I think that that would not only encourage people to start looking at a career with TDOC, but also better inform the community of what we can and can't do as a probation and pro officer. Yeah, in the country, small town, they've got one sheriff, uh, sheriff's deputy on duty. You guys happen to be coming here for career day at the school, so handle the situation. You are responding to a report of an active shooter at a high school. That's Alcos. When you come in, watch my side and I'll watch your side. Don't shoot. Get out, get out, get out. Evacuate the, the the Evacuate the building. Evacuate the building. Get behind us. Get behind us. Get behind us. Make sure you watch my alcoves careful. There's one coming up on you. Yep. Ma'am. 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 Come with us and get behind us. Go out the side door. Get away from the building. Ma'am. Get away. Get out of the building. Okay. When we come up on this corner, mm -hmm. be very careful. I'm covering the can left. Can you see my side or can I see yours? Okay. I've got both sides covered. We're going to the right. Going to the right. One body on the ground. Come with us. Come with us. Get behind us. Get out of the building. Get back out of the building. He's in that room. He's in that room. Door shut to your head. That's the ladies' room. Right, right. Okay. There's somebody standing in the window. Being able to collaborate with different agencies and our department building that line of communications with local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies is, is a great thing to witness but also to be a part of. The scenarios today 
included uh, two active shooter incidents. It's, uh, it's challenging. It's even just sitting back and watching other people do it, which I've done before, is the different thought processes, the different situations you can be placed in are, are challenging. Um, you really don't know what it's like until you experience it yourself. So it goes to show that there are situations to where our awareness, our ability to observe our surroundings, and the individuals who are present um, are very important to deciding whether or not lethal force should be used. Today we completed a transfer investigation for an offender to start residing in a different county from the one that they were convicted of their offense. Um, the officer who will be supervising the offender was present just to meet the person and let them know uh, what's expected out of them and to exchange contact information. We were able to walk through the residence and verify that it does appear that the offender is actually living at this location. Um, no violations were present from what we viewed and it looks like the offender will be approved to have their supervision transferred to another county.